Who dares enter my sacred grove? I have gone through great lengths to conceal myself from the destructive hands of humanity. Every forest they touch one day is reduced to nothing but splinters, smoke, and the countless lives they see as lesser. Let me see if you are, in fact, human. Hmm. It would seem that not only has a human wandered onto this sacred land, but a man at that. This is an issue. You see, if you were a female, at least I could hand you over to the spirits of the forest, and I could have them decide which one of my subjects you would be. You could have lived your life as a nymph, or a dryad among the trees, as a beautiful flower in this grove, a centaur who was bold and precise, or a satyr who could sing songs that even the mountains bow for. But instead, we have you. We cannot let you leave this place. Nor can we have a human ruining the sanctity of this place. I cannot allow you to be given to one of my subjects as the cunning you required to get here would make you a danger to let out of sight. Fret not, I am not as barbaric as your kind. I will not kill you. What I will do to you is a practice done to many men who have come here before you. The hunter who chased after my special deer, the lumberjack who tried to fell the first tree, and the adventurer who couldn't keep his sword sheathed. They all serve a part. As all humans were once my subjects, they still have essence that can be used by the forest. And the best way to obtain this essence is to milk it out of them. Your life will be connected to the forest. You will be fed and you will be drained over and over again, forever. I will grant you one thing before I start. I will allow you to see my full form. Hmm, <laughs> barely an adult. Such a shame. There's no need to be scared, little one. You will feel endless pleasure. First, your clothing will be removed, as it is unnatural. There, just as you were brought into this world, Second, my vines will cover your chest, your arms, your legs, and your neck, but your penis will remain exposed. Don't try and fight it, little one. The vines are starting to sink with your body. They will supply you with everything you need to survive, and provide you with pleasure. Isn't that nice? The flowers? Hmm. So it was them that led you here? They are trusting, but so easy to frighten. If what you say is true, 
then I am deeply sorry. I cannot release you, but perhaps I can change your fate. You are not deserving of this punishment. But at the same time, the previous reasons for going through with this still stand. I must contemplate on what to do next. I would be lying if I said that you weren't different from the others. My distrust for your kind has blinded me and I was unable to sense the pollen of my special flower. They do not reproduce as they are eternal, but it is said that they only release pollen as a way to grant safe passage to my realm. They are like children. They take the things I say and try their best to solve my problems with solutions that they do not know will cause more problems. It started during the winter solstice when I met up with my sisters to discuss the current state of nature as a whole was in. We are growing weaker. Where you're from, you might not know this. But there are lands with houses made of steel that scrape against the sky. Many buildings longer than your village that take the things your kind stole from us and subjugate them for their needs while they release poison into the air and waters. A few of my sisters have broken the sacred rule that was put in place when your kind first left the forest. Instead of binding them to the forest to serve as their food for eternity, they are bound to them to serve as a source of strength. It would seem that the flowers have elected you. In the way I see it, there are two options. I can continue with the binding process and you will be covered in vines that harden to resemble trees where you will remain at the center of. Your mind would be broken, and my vines would keep you alive as they milk your penis for the essence they need to survive. Or, I can try this new process. The vines around you will be my own, and I will allow you to keep your mind. Our relationship would not be different from the husbands and wives that you know. And for as long as I live, you will remain attached to me as I will be attached to you. You want to be attached to me? It is decided then. These vines will unwrap you now so that I may take their place. Stand. Before I start, I would like you to taste some of my nectar. You will need strength. Open your mouth. Good boy. Lick my finger clean. Good. Your body should start to feel warm and tingly. My nectar is quite potent. It acts as a source of nutrition and an aphrodisiac. Contrary to the belief that the semen itself is the source of energy, it's more like a vessel for the energy to flow through. The energy must be separated from the semen so that it might flow into me, and so that the semen may be used to feed this forest. That is why you must be restrained. I cannot risk the delicate process being disturbed by you suddenly being taken by pleasure. 
your muscles will soon go limp, so before that, I will wrap you up with my vines. These vines are different than the other ones, and I'm sure you can feel why. They feel like me. I am neither flesh nor plant. I'm a part of nature itself, and as such, the body you see here is but a shell, an attractive shell. Just like before, your head and groin are the only part of your body that is to be exposed. But unlike before, I have no intention of covering your face and turning this shell into your eternal prison. To start, I will take you into my arms. I will support your head with my hand. And now the process may begin. <laughs> 